So, okay, Fantina, let's talk to her. Um, so let's go as shiny odds are really good. Um, the more I looked into it, the more I'm like, man, this is insane. Once you've got the charm and the catch combo and the lure, it's like a 1 in 280 something. It's ridiculously low for shiny hunting. Whereas, you know, in Sword and Shield, comparatively, 512 is the lowest. 1 in 512. Anyway, long story short, I found a Diglett really fast. 274 encounters in. Like, two hours in. It was nothing. Yeah, uh, the way that that tunnel works... There's a guy in there, and if you go too close to him, he says, Hey, you can't come past here. The Diglett was standing one square past him, so when I went to get it, the guy stopped me, turned me away, and reset the spawns. I was very unhappy. You might understand. I mentioned that mostly because, you know, the, it's the setup for the for the problem. Because uh, it was spent thousands and thousands of Diglett later before I finally found another shiny Diglett. Now, two shiny Chansey in between. That's just what snapped me. And it was 27 hours of searching for Diglett and 3, 000, over 3,700 encounters. It was nuts. Uh, my, there was a point uh, which we were talking about... We're talking about Diglett specifically, but we're also talking a bit about, like, Perseverance, I think. I can't remember. Um, you've only got a shiny type Null and Rowler. You've got a shiny type Null? Damn! That's awesome! Um, that is actually quite cool. Um, dude, dedication, by the way, on the shiny Rowler. Now that, I'm, now that I think about it. Because you would have had to... Did you reset for them? Or did you... For the Rowler? Or did you breed them? Just curiosity. Um, because either way, damn, <laughs> quite bluntly, damn, um, not the easiest thing to get, uh, starters in particular, just not the easiest thing to get shinies of. First shiny, only around 200 odd stuff resets, that's not bad, that's pretty good. Um, Rattler was breeding into the thousands, yep. I, um, I have seen... A lot of crazy numbers. Sorry, Dragon Pulse. I should pay attention to the battle while I do this. Ah, are you serious? Did you just fly? Give me a second. Um, yeah, so I'm currently in the middle of breeding for a Dratini. Uh, trying to get a shiny Dratini. And I'm up to 270 eggs, I think. So it's not crazy high at the moment. Um, but I've watched. I've been watching someone else who's doing a shiny Absol hatch. And they have gotten up to over 1,500 eggs at this point. And it's just like, oh man, I feel for you. I really feel for you. Um, and he's doing a really good job. You know, he, he start, you can see you can see it in his videos. He's starting to lose a lot of hope about the whole thing. It's like, i got no faith in it. It's just, it's not going to happen. It's like, well, you got to give up for a time. You've got to give up for a time. But at the same time, dude, you're going to get it. Like, it's pure RNG. Like, that's what we're dealing with what I had to deal with with the Diglett. So like, this was literally why I like, I got a Diglett. I ran, I got this Diglett and it took me forever. And I know you can do this by continuing to hatch eggs, damn it. Uh, and I know that if I run up against a similar thing to the Diglett like last time, it'll suck. But I have learned my lesson and continuing, continuing to keep going is usually the best option. Uh, that's annoying that we're confused. I haven't been paying as much attention as I should to this battle. Uh, Serious? First he is broken. Such a broken ability. Uh, we're gonna get. Hang on. We're gonna revive up Marsh again because I think we're gonna need Zen Headbutt. Don't know if we can. Yeah. Yeah, I figured we'd die, but I'm just out. But I'm just thinking. I think we need to. I think we need to kill this one with Zen Headbutt, and then we can probably flame charge her. Miss, uh, Miss Magius. The Zen headbutt knocks out Gengar pretty uncomfortably, I think. Oh, we get knocked out by it one way or the other. Jeez. Okay. Um, but a lot of people, and, and this is where I honestly think that people have way more patience than someone like me. Through Halloween, there were a lot of people, a lot of people shiny hunting for the uh, um, Stynasty the authentic shiny authentic synesty oh my god the you know the 31,000 encounters or whatever that they had 
multiple synesty, multiple um uh thing like all of that. Wrecked. Yes, exactly. Wrecked. I had to actually look in closer what you said and said wrecked. It's absolutely right. Um, so annoying. Yeah, like I was watching people have that number, like that sort of number of encounters. It's nuts. I get. I honestly get super impressed by people, to be honest. I don't know that I have that patience. Um, then there's people that are like, I, you know, the soft resetting is probably some of the hardest uh, hunting methods around. Uh, because obviously you got to go through the resets. You can only do so many per hour. I'm currently debating because I've got, I say debating, I've got one commitment to do that uh, at the moment, which is I'm going to soft reset for a shiny Articuno and let's go. I already hate the idea. It's always a full odd shiny. You can't do the catch combos to reduce it. I won't have the shiny charm. The lure doesn't do much at that level. It's basically a full odd shiny. Um, I'm very scared of how long that's going to take. And according to someone else who's done soft resetting in Let's Go, it's about 200 per four hours at most that you can do. I think it was 120, she said, actually. Uh, so it's 120 per four hour like block. And I'm like, oh, that's going to be sucky. So, to get into, so if we end up in the thousands soft resetting for an Articuno, not convinced it's going to be fun. Uh, this is gonna be hours and hours, you know. So, um, BDSP shiny charm doesn't affect legends, so those will be full odds. Okay, I haven't actually seen anything on it at the moment. I'm sorry, I'm not focusing on the battle. <laughs> I'm trying to do it all. Um, <laughs> it's actually quite cool that she dances around and stuff, though. That looked pretty cool. Like, I didn't. I I might stop and look at that again in a second. Um. Yeah, BDS, yeah, I haven't looked up what the shiny charm, like, how to get it either. I assume it's the Pokedex again, but they treated the Pokedex in a different capacity, you know? Um, shiny charm from data mines only affect breeding. Could be, could get patched, but I think it was intentional. Only affect breeding? Ooh, okay. It probably was intentional, and look, to be honest, breeding is the way most of us, like, I won't say most of us, it's the way I think is probably interesting way of doing it. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna heal. There are a lot. Oh, yeah, I have. Uh -huh. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Oh, when did I learn close combat? I actually didn't notice that. That's actually a very bad thing to not notice that you did. <laughs> I didn't even notice it. Uh, is that... Yeah, we're fine. So it's new neutral. Um... I think you're right and it is intentional. I swear most things in this sort of, in these, uh, most things in the games are intentional. I can pretty much promise you, uh, that they're intentional because you, you thought, because there are some things that just never get patched and you go, hmm, so that was a workaround you put in, right? Like after all this time, they had a workaround. Um, I just think they keep making breeding the better choice. The shiny charm didn't affect breeding and wild encounters only. Things would change. Yeah. Yeah, it really would. Um, the thing is, the thing about it is, there are some Pokemon that are better or and or more fun to, to like, hunt in the overworld. And there are some Pokemon that are more possible to hunt in the overworld, or because they're less, like, breeding, like, the, I'll use the shot, the Sinistee, uh, authentic Sinistee example. That is not a, po a Pokemon that you can realistically breed for so full of tiny synesty hunting would have uh, authentic synesty hunting would have sucked uh gym badge hey check it out got another one up the top there got the relic badge nice uh so yeah i'm pretty i'm feeling rather confident that uh like if that is the case and it only affects breeding that there are just some pokemon that are going to just be awful to try to get so legendaries i think i get i would understand and actually kind of accept that legendaries being uh constantly being soft resets that are a bit difficult to obtain i can actually accept that like they're rare that's the point of them so it might suck but i can accept it is there a teleportation up here 
nuts. I thought there was. I don't know why. In my head, I thought there was a teleportation way back down, but apparently not. Um, so like, I get it for legendaries, but if there's a Pokemon that is rare or like a specifically difficult thing to get, then it becomes something that you would want a bit of an advantage on. Um, God's hunting can suck. I think they make people value their shinies more. They go through more of a journey for that individual one. I agree with that too. Uh, but the story matters as well. So, comparison to the Diglett run, like that Diglett thing has a story to it and I will never forget that. I have a shiny Diglett, but you know what else I'll never forget? The next shiny I hunted was Ponyta. I stuffed up the catch combo somewhere around 27 when one ran away. When I got to 27 again, the 54th Ponyta was shiny wasn't even full odds it wasn't it wasn't full odds but it wasn't even fully down from the catch combo i don't have the shiny charm there were no lures active that's a story too you know i purposely soft reset a thousand times and i got this shiny that's a story like it, it it's there's value to it and i i know people hang on what do you do by the ruins oh that's fine um i realize what you're doing so do you give me fly now Maybe not. Okay, that's fine. Um, does someone give me fly now? I feel like you would want fly at this point. But look, I do agree with you. And like, the shinies that I have found at random actually mean less to me than the ones I'm searching for. Like, to a point. Like, fair enough. Must have felt good after having one run away. Yeah, but it wasn't a... It wasn't For the pony tar, it wasn't a shiny that ran away. It was just... Uh, the catch combo was broken by a Ponyta running away, just to be clear. Um, so 54, but 54 Ponyta, you know, I found and caught my shiny. Um, but for the Diglett, it was because one ran away at the start, and then it was like thousands before the next one showed up at all. Um, like, damn, like, there's a huge story in the fact that, like, 54 in, it was not full odds, but it was, I wasn't prepared for it, it just happened. Uh... Uh, that's a story for another day. I will watch that later. Um, but like the you know this uh, uh, the thing is I think shinies are special regardless of the odds. I guess that's the way I'd put it. Like the odds of like one in five hundred or something like that. Like that's still a lot. Like that is a lot. And when you're talking odds and not guarantees. It changes things again. Damn it, you turned. That's fine. Um, the values to the player, really. Yes, it, it, it is. And that's and that's true. I, 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 the truth is, I don't think that there's a single shiny hunter out there that doesn't love their shinies, you know? Uh, love what they fear. Because it's effort, right? And again, I think there's a story. Uh, I once watched... Uh, I, I sent a raid off to a guy, Flip, Ess Flip Essence, who... Legend. Absolute legend. Uh, sent off the raid to him and he actually kind of acts it like had just found a shiny salamence he was resetting for Reggie Rock. Uh, when I left he got that then later in the stream he got a third one like again there's a story there and I think it's those stories like you try so hard on some of them that because you're hunting them that it means a lot to find them I think the true devaluing of a shiny, like, I have, like, I like playing Pokemon Go, like, it's, as I'm trying to get fit and healthy, or I'm failing dismally, but as I'm trying, like, I've been out there on community days looking for, for Pokemon. That reminds me, Shinx Day is on Sunday, I really should make a no <sighs> I'm working. Nuts, I will literally have no time to do it. Ah. Uh, nuts, that annoys me so much now. I accepted work on Sunday. <laughs> okay, anyway, totally irrelevant to the point I'm making, though, uh, because what I'm getting at is that, like, 1 in 25 odds on those days, right? Uh, I'm going to use another repel. And it's like, well, I found, uh, I found seven shinies on that day of that Pokemon. There's no value to it. It's, I, uh, yeah, okay, they're cool looking. There's no value to it. Um... On the other hand, the random finding of my shiny Ghastly in, the, in there, the random shiny Rhyhorn, uh, 
it means a lot you know the the ones that are hard to get it means so much more even if they are like i think the legendaries are like one in 25 from what i understand uh we never fought them i guess we have to fight them now <laughs> hiccups thank you hiccups so yeah i'll get off the topic now i think i agree uh, the point is we agree it's just one of those things where i'm like yeah i just the more i think about it the more i go there's a when there's a story that's what matters and that story can be i randomly found it like I, I i i randomly hatched when i was breeding a competitive team and i say competitive team like i was building a team that i found fun to play competitively uh and it sucked but it was fun for me to to do the actual it was fun for me to do the actual uh breeding and the actual figuring out of the team and the moves and all of that and and hatching and all of that and so i found a um well, it's something to talk about, just nice to discuss. Actually, you're right, yeah, you are right. But it's just like, I also know I repeat myself, and so I try not hard not to, uh... I am working very hard to close things off when they need to close, I guess. Uh, in saying that, if you got more to say, always happy to hear. And, you know, as long as it's not just me repeating myself over and over again, I tend to be fine, fine with that, you know? Um, because that's what I do, I repeat myself. Like, just then, absolute evidence to the point, I literally said it three times. Um... Um, but yeah, I'm oh, sorry, but with what I was, uh, what I was just saying, uh, no, we don't need to get through Um, I just need to get through the cave, because I hate caves. Um, the, like, yeah, so the fee, the random fee bass that I managed to hatch, that meant so much to me to have this competitive, this, it wasn't the right stats, but in Sword and Shield, they obviously give you the ways to, to fix that. Uh, but yeah, the shiny sword and sh like the shiny Milotic means so much to me. Uh, and the random trap inch I found in a challenge, like I was doing a personal challenge run to figure something out like a year and a half ago, uh, for myself. I figured it out. <laughs> I really did. I need to figure out where Fly is. Hang on. That's what I need was checking. Fly... Fly Pokemon Diamond. If it's all the way back somewhere else. I'll just run away. Look at that cave. Seriously, look how good that cave looks. I love the caves. Um, yeah, I found a trap inch randomly. Literally, no hunting, no story. I was just in the desert. I the desert section. Oh, jeez, I missed some trainers. Uh, what was all the way back? Oh, I sorry. When I was saying way back, like last year, when I was doing, I was doing a challenge run myself. Uh, so I was doing, seeing if I could beat the game with only Score Bunny. And I just got to the desert, ran into a trap inch, and hey, it's black. Found a black trap inch, uh, like a shiny trap inch. I'm like, oh well, there you go. So I, I, I caught it, and I, it, it became my competitive flygon because I just used gold bottle caps to do the whole hyper training thing. It was fun. <laughs> It's like, I just get this random thing that I wasn't even searching for. Like, so there's a mix of that. Again, I think there's all, I think if there's a story to it, it's special. Um, if you don't make a story to it, if you, and even if it's rare, it's special. So that's, that's sort of the conclusion I'm drawing. Um, and again, I don't want to repeat myself too much. Um... HM Fly. I beat the gym leader where you have to use it, but I can't find it. Team Galactic Warehouse in Veilstone. Nuts. Uh, a friend of mine found a shiny Cacnea when I was in a voice chat with them. My ears will never forget that squeal. <laughs> that is a great statement. Um, <laughs> that is a really good one, actually. Um... Yeah, there is, look, there is something about that. Uh, definitely something to that. <laughs> um, but it's, 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 look, and, yeah, I think that kind of proves the point, doesn't it? That's the, there's the, uh, there's the story that makes it fun. Uh, and they will forever treasure that, that Pokemon. Do you give it? 
That's funny. Okay, hold on. I know what the joke is here. He's on the other side of Route 218. <laughs> oh, that is cool. They put us onto a Bibarel. Um, and you never ran into a random shiny salt to the wound? Oh. Uh, look. One day. It's just odds. Like, this is the... And again, this is sort of what we were talking about earlier. It's just odds. Um, I forget who explained it to me. Oh, I didn't realise you were there. Um, I forget who explained it to me before, but someone was talking about a, um... I won't say odds. It was... They were talking about... Like they were talking like it was some one it was one of the challenge run um people who play challenge runs uh and they were talking about how you know if there is a chance of something they can just be patient and keep trying and that's what ultimately gets them through because there's an odds to it there's a chance to it so as a for instance like if you were relying on and i can't do this for a long period of time i have no idea how he does it where you go there is a chance of you know let's argue a uh, that the chance is I need to have the have the Pokemon my opposing Pokemon be confused for three turns it has to hit themselves for at least two out of those turns then the next Pokemon has to be uh, has to not use an attacking move on the first turn so I can paralyze it then confuse them uh, then I am able to do so you get the idea you stack up all these odds and you go geez That's just not possible, but it is it's just how many attempts will it take and so when you sit there and go well You know, I tried this battle 200 times. I get caught up at about 10 and I go um, Yeah, it's very very hard, you know sounds like a speed one strap for world record <laughs> It's true. You're right actually now that you say that it is that same mentality. That's why I was talking about it earlier and saying challenge runs are a lot like speed runs in their own right where it's just a different type of speed run it's how long you know it's how you know can i even do it and then you could arguably take that another step further but again i already said that so i won't repeat myself too much uh, let's go with pillow but it is very like that like the way he described it i was just like this is not what i was expecting as a a mental way of looking at it like it's so shiny hunting is the same it's actually what got me to be able to accept that i might be able to try shiny hunting was that statement like challenge runs so do i um speed doesn't have to be the prime subject of difficulty also agreed completely agree i just compare it in the sense of like it's the same mentality i think it is the same mentality it's just focusing on a different perspective so uh, as I, like, so again, using that as the example, like, uh, most of the time people are going, can I even beat the game like this? And it is, like, the funny thing is, having watched people, he also said something else that really got to me, uh, in, in a good way, that got to me in a good way. So we were, uh, it was a, a run where we did a run uh, like we're talking, he was talking about how people suggest certain speed runs to him, uh, and like how that sometimes can be problematic because it's like, oh, do you know, do a Durant run? Durant has really good stats though, so he, he wouldn't do it. Why would you do it? Because it's too easy. But that would be too easy. And the actual truth of the matter is, it wouldn't be too easy. It would be perceived as too easy, which is worse. Uh, I did a challenge run run recently, so one of uh, one of my followers, Silkshot, he uh, his favorite Pokemon's Charmander, uh, and I my fa and I, I'm like I just did a, a fire red and leaf green run. I don't want to do another one. I just don't want to. And hang on, are you gonna be giving me fly? No. Okay. Oh, okay. That was weird. Okay. Why? I don't know why they kind of needed to leave that in there. Why didn't they just take that out then? Uh, anyway, that, that's separate point entirely. Let's heal up and basically go to the gym. 
Uh, actually, we have a battle with our rival first in a second, don't we? I have this vague recollection of how annoying that was. So, I definitely know it exists. Um, anyway, long story short, like, he's never done a speed run with just the... Uh, sorry, not speed run. He's never done a challenge run with the starters. I sort of sat there going, this is going to be easy. Charmander might learn... Like, Charmander learns Metal Claw. It doesn't in Emerald, by the way. Only Fire Red and Leaf Ring. Uh, and I'll have an easy ride through. Here's what happened. I chose to do it in Emerald. Uh, because I figured I've already done a run in Fire Red and Leaf Green lately. I did the Team Rocket Challenge run, which was hard in its own right. A lot of the time, the difficulty comes down to how low a level can you actually do it, I think. Uh, which is the fun part of Challenge Runs. How can I do it at such a low level? Beedrill, for instance. A team of Beedrill don't even need to pass that level 50, right? Um, because the starter types are generic, there tends to be a gym that's good against them. That is exactly, uh, exactly one of the reasons why it actually has a difficulty level. The other is, I mean, don't forget, it is still a first form Pokemon when, especially later in the game, regardless of what is, uh, what you're facing, they're gonna have, so let's, let's use, so Charmander is the example. I think it has base stats of 309 from memory. And like, you're coming up against Pokemon with base stats of far, uh, like between 480 to 500 to 600, like the legendary levels at 600 and something. And you've got to beat them with this one Pokemon. And a team of them, especially the Elite Four. Here's five Pokemon in a row that your one has to beat. My worst one, my worst run, uh, in that was, well, in that challenge was Wallace. Of course. Champion Wallace, fire type Pokemon. I had no chance. I managed to do it. I needed to be level 100. No items. That was the other thing. I didn't do items in battle. Uh, because that was my challenge. Like, I did see, so... I'm sorry, because I'm jumping around now a little bit. I'm trying to keep to one topic, but... Uh, relating to the Charmander one. Right, when I did the Score Bunny one, I let myself do items, and I could beat the at level 80. I could beat Leon at level 80. It took a few tries, but I could beat him at level 80. I wanted to see if I could beat Emerald without any items at all in battle, like aside from held items, so you can put a held item in play and, and use that, but that was all. Um, yeah, it was hard. I can't even remember quite how I beat it in the end. I think the it, it's kind of weird. The end run against Wallace was holding a silk scarf so you could boost the power of return you did need uh you needed return and brick break they were the two moves you needed brick break brick no you didn't need brick break i think it was just return because all of his types of water right so having fire type didn't help fire type moves didn't help Getting rid of them didn't help either. Uh, so there's a whole lot of reasons why it just did not, like, it wasn't very easy. At level 100, I was still working out what item do I need, what level do I need, and then I tried to face Steven Stone, and my first thought is he's a friggin' Steel-type trainer. This is easy. Throw Charmander out there. Yeah, I can beat Metagross. Yeah, I can beat Skarmory. No, I cannot beat Cradley. Well, I could beat, sorry. Uh, I, no, I cannot beat Claydol. Except that I can beat Claydol, if I think like this and do this, 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 and make sure to brick break away all of the um, shields, it's possible. Except that you then cast either Armaldo, Cradley, or Agron sometimes. And that strategy ended up having to be Sunny Day, Fire Blast, Charcoal. They were the, they were the ones I needed. You had to kill Metagross in one hit, kill Skarmory in one hit, brick break away the the light screen and reflex, then knock out Claydol in one hit, then knock out Agron in one hit, then you could fight Claydol and uh, Cradley and and uh, Armaldo, which you would still lose to sometimes. <laughs> it was like, the champion was like three hours of struggling, Stephen Stone was like three hours of struggling. Trying different things and figuring out how the moves were supposed to stack and what you could do. I love that. 
because with the restrictions made it put in play, it didn't matter the speed. So I'm agreeing with your point you made. Speed doesn't have to be the primary um, subject. By putting it so it wasn't items except for held items, we can only hold one thing. You've only got one Pokemon in your party. You've only got one chance to win here. How do you do it? And that sort of stuff actually does... Uh, that's the stuff I am good at. Single situation, get out of this situation. Uh, that's when I can actively time, work on it, and do things that make it happen. Um, okay, so I have hardly been paying attention, but I'm pretty sure we still have the win here. It's just that I have to beat a print one. Uh, I got rid of Brass Knot! Oh, nuts. Um... That's a nice mental game trying to figure out the puzzle laid out in front of you. I think it's the best way of doing it, to be honest. Well, I think that's my strength, is what's in front of me, figure that out. Memory of that is not the, is not the best thing, but figuring out what's exactly in front of me is one of my strengths. But it is what's exactly in front of me. It's very difficult to do anything else. I can't pre-plan it. I did pre-plan it. This is the thing, I pre-planned Wallace, and I pre-planned Steven, and both times took hours to do, because the plan didn't work. I did a different challenge that I actually thought was much funnier. Um, not necessarily in a good way. Well, yes, in a good way. I I decided in Sword and Shield I wanted to raise a Pokemon up to level 100 before I started the gym challenge. And once again, this is a, it'll be easy. Um, even though pickup isn't as powerful as it used to be, I'll just use a pickup Pokemon. The Pokemon in the wild area level up with, you know, level up over the course of the wild area. This is not going to be a problem. It'll just take time. Yeah, 16 hours. Oh, sorry, 10 hours. And in the end, I have to change the strategy halfway through because they, uh, they cap your experience early in the game. So late game, you could be raising stuff and be getting, you know, 2,000 experience per Pokemon. Early game, you beat a Steelix at level 50, yeah, you get like 260 experience. I beat a freaking level 50 Steelix with a level 45 Grookey and could only get a couple of hundred experience out of it. They just completely nerfed it. I had to change strategy. I had to change things in the middle of it. I came in with a plan. Pick up in that whole game in the end. Never picked me up one rare candy. GF says no. <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah, okay. Uh, fair enough. And look, spending that amount of time is hard. And to be fair, I did that over three streams. So uh, it wasn't in one go. It was 16 hours in, in three streams. So it made a difference. Uh, we healed, right? I just healed. I think we just go in with this, because except for Zoomeril... And I don't know why and one of these trainers has a Zoomeril. Except for a Zoomeril, this should be easy. Um, but yeah, I just, like, that's how it is. It's like, I, once I was in the middle of it, I had to come up with a solution. And that still took me a while. But that's the point. That's where my strength lies, I think. And that's, uh, I think it's important to know where your strengths lie and then be able to adapt. So, how do you use that strength to then do X, Y, and Z? Um, it is almost time. I think I have to do it now. 8 o'clock. I am going to be right back. Actually, no, we'll do it in half an hour. I have to put out my bins of all things. <laughs> I thought I'd be done by now. Which is not a problem. Uh, I'm actually having my second win somewhere in the middle of all that, so I'm actually feeling pretty good. But uh, at some point in the next, like, probably half an hour, I have to go out and take my bins out, because they didn't empty them last week. Uh, it was on the curb. They should have taken them, but they did not, sadly. So, I definitely have that they empty it this time so there'll be a bit of a I will need to take about five minutes and make sure that it's all thought and invisible and they definitely cannot ignore it and if they do I will be reporting them to the council um <laughs> so because like anyone can make a mistake miss a bin there was like there was a four wheel drive in front of it my my um, housemate parks in front of it would, would park near it but it was it was there like I, I don't see any reason why they couldn't take it this it just happened Anyway, I'll do that in about half an hour, so that won't be a problem. They don't come until the afternoon for this one, so that is totally fine. I just want to make sure it's out before I... Plus, it's, like, probably time for another, another like, you know, refill water bottle and get uh, get another coffee in me sort of thing. 
sort of get things going. Yeah. Uh, Alright, that wasn't too bad. Now, I forget how this puzzle goes. I feel like it's this one. That looked absolutely cool. That actually looked really cool with how fast that moved. That was so quick. Uh, I'm very curious if that's how they do all of the, um... They did it with magnets. I know the whole concept of this one is positive, negative, and magnets. Um, so more related to steel, but the more I look at it, this is kind of an electric gym puzzle. I'm actually kind of curious if it's an electric... If, if, if this was originally designed to be the electric gym puzzle. I'd love to know at some point. I don't know, it's one of those things that you may never find out, but I'm curious. It feels like, because positive and negative, and using electromagnets could easily be trans translated that way. Uh, let's use plus my back. I'm pretty sure I remember the way. Man, you are strong. Damn. You got a lot of strength in that steel eh? Wow. Yeah, definitely need to get a copy of me at some point soon. <laughs> I'll still be going, but it's just one of those things that's like, yes, have to, have to, uh, must definitely get a copy at some point soon. So that will happen. Um, hmm. So. Do we... I need another Pokemon. I think I need another Pokemon or two soon. Uh, after going through Oraz and how that had tons of load sessions, I'm glad this doesn't follow that same trend. Uh, they disguise them better, actually. I think that's the short answer. Uh, Oraz, um... There weren't that many load sections in Emerald. Uh, in, in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. And that is to the detriment. That's, so it's not there, okay. Um... And I think that's to their detriment, so there's a lot more loading, like, we need to load up a lot more. Whereas, I think, practically... Oh, really? You do have to go around, okay. Uh, whether, whereas, practically, the, um, this... The way they disguise the load sections in this game is by having the gateways. Uh, and that is... It's a trick that a lot of game programmers use. Uh... By, by going through from town to town, so, and you enter through a gate, that gives you the loading time. So you only have to load this tiny thing and then load the whole city behind it. It's actually really clever. Um, and it's, like, there should be way more usage of, of that in, in, in life, uh, I say in life, in games, uh, like Pokemon, because Sword and Shield did it and I didn't realize. Before you finish the game, when you leave certain sections of the play of the game, it stops and loads. And it's pretty quick, but it does do it. Um, uh, and, uh, what was I saying? Um, but it only loads once, because it's loading the, the, the game data for the storyline. And then when you actually walk through them later in the game, you don't have to load. Uh, so it's very clever, again, very clever, disguised as a you're entering a city while you're playing, but then when you play the game later, it doesn't distract. Uh, in Oraz, the gym, just the gym 7 to gym 8 area felt so alienating. Yeah, and I would agree with that, because it is a... I hate that area. <laughs> like, I know it's a meme at this point, but the IGN review, the Too Much Water review, 100% right. That section is massive lake, and I hate it. A massive body of ocean water. Hate it. You, to actively explore it when you didn't know where it was, uh, yeah, really painful. So, yeah. So, and and I don't think that improved in Oraz at all. Uh, and I don't think I can really say anything, add anything more to that. It just is. Like, Gen 3 is my favourite generation. I love it. I love Hoenn. Favourite place to go. It is literally my... my like, every... Basically every Pokemon. Love them. 
uh, that's mine. That's my gen, right? My favorite Pokemon is Flygon from that gen. Uh, basically, every, you know, Rayquaza is my favorite legendary. I like, I don't dislike, but I do like most of the other generations. Just this was my favorite. It's the one I played the most. I love what it introduced, and so on and so on and so on. I won't continue. Um, uh, yeah, so, but like, I just love it. I love, like, yeah, the Reggie's actually. Gen 3 Reggie Quest is your fave legendary, dude. That's, that's sick. Um, I liked that too, admittedly. Like, I loved the, the little, because the, it wasn't insane puzzles. It was nice little puzzles, and it was all self-contained. There wasn't much in the way of, like, post-introduced legendaries. Unlike from Gen 4 onwards and Gen 5 onwards, they really started to ramp up the legendaries. It was kind of the last of the contained legendary trios. Latias and Latios were still annoying, but they were cool. Uh, it was very much an acceptable thing for me to look at those and go, yeah, that's fine. I can accept these. Uh, I loved it. I love it. I love double battles. I love the, the, I was going to say theory, but it wasn't theory. It was, um, it was, um, words they're not coming but it was the words um the abilities the abilities were added like there was so it was so different from the pokemon that i had already grown up with and it was so much better the graphics change uh, i was a teenager it, it was very much my formative formative pokemon game anyway i mostly mentioned that to go that was just sick <laughs> i loved it um, so yeah, that whole thing is, is very much like, uh, I can talk it up for days, but I can still recognize its flaws and water, that whole section, definitely a flaw. Emerald had one really amazing thing about it that I, uh, will also always talk up. I love the, um, I love both Team Aqua and Magma running at the same time something that has not been replicated since and really should like there's a story you know like not the same way obviously but why can't there be two evil teams technically we kind of had that in swords but not really because like team yell and team um uh team yell and and macro cosmo they weren't like macro cosmo was more of a company uh, i mean that whole thing was annoying in the first place i have my problem with that but uh team yell wasn't really that evil and all that uh but you know that's but they weren't really fighting each other it just wasn't implemented the same way but i think they're kind of trying to go that way uh you find it more genuine when a fan of it can recognize the flaws i actually agree with you i think that i think most fans can recognize the flaws i think what most people don't like is people uh actively sitting there and arguing why it's like i like why they hate it i think they can recognize the flaws and even have discussions with people about the flaws almost every fan i don't there are the few very few people that truly have rose colored colored glasses for everything um for everything about you know their favorite thing i, I think i might be wrong but i think um so yeah, I think gen genu generally, it's the depth of most fandoms is measured by how much they argue about certain aspects of the of of these things. So you know, uh, uh, Team Yell being support group for uh, a different ri uh, before a rival was different. I like it in concept. I actually do agree. I have issues more with the implementation of what their motivation was uh, because uh, look, I'll be really honest with. Without going into it again, because I have talked about this a lot in videos and on streams, I've played a lot of Sword and Shield, so I, I bring it up almost every time. <laughs> I have my problems with Sword and Shield story on the whole. Where basically, it just isn't a good story. Uh, like, they've got really good characters. Like, when I analyze the depth of what you actually see in someone like Hop, uh, when you don't realize it, like, you start to talk about, okay, so I need to... Hold on. What do my move pool look like? Because I think I need to go and heal. Uh, 
I might be fine. One close combat isn't the best, but I think once I'm healed, that should be fine. Uh, I'm going to take the risk. I'll save, though, just in case I have to... I don't mind resetting for this sort of thing. I probably won't. Uh, okay, we ran out of super potions by the looks of it, so we are into the Moo Moo Moves, which is not a bad thing. We're actually at that point where we need 100, 100 health. And potion used. Alright, ready to roll. And we, uh, we've got an Aether if we really, like, uh, really need it now. Right, right, R button, right, R button. Perfect. Um, Moo Moo Milk, is this Zelma? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I, I assume that was the inspiration, to be fair. Um, Orenberg City, lock to learn, raw. Yep, thank you. We will fight for you. Um, yeah, so, so, most of Team Yell's motivation was they needed money to win to bring more, I guess, attention to Spike Muth. Here's the thing. Spike Myth is a part of the gym challenge. Literally, people have to come to your place. Nothing they did made sense. In saying that, there were little touches, and I'll, and I'll get to the character thing again in a minute. There were little touches, like how Team Yell use friend balls. All of Team Yell use friend balls when they throw their Pokemon out. They're friend balls. Um, I had a discussion with someone at one point that I absolutely love where we sort of got into the details of the depth of dark type trainers because Pierce is so much more complicated than just I am dark and brooding. There's so much more to him and there's so much more to Marnie than the same thing, you know? Dark doesn't mean evil, which is what everyone seems to equate it to a lot of the time. Dark just means dark. Um, very interesting and very fascinating concepts overall that they sort of played in but they just played in with this thing of like spike myth yeah okay it didn't have a power spot okay you might not be respected among the other gyms but you are respected among the gym leaders you prove that through the rest of the story that you are actually a respected trainer but Piers is definitely a respected trainer so what was really wrong with spike myth like it was why was spike Wow, we died. We got hit hard by that. Um, I will throw out Marsh and try to Aqua Tail, I guess. And if it doesn't work, I'll revive and hopefully I can close combat it because that was bad. He is a lot stronger than he looks. An earthquake is a pain. So, and again, I could talk about the Sword and Shield story, like. Rose's thing makes no sense. I understand the allegory. The allegory is climate change. Yes. But the difference is 50 years or less than 50 years. Well, what are we at now? 30 years left? Less than 30 years left? A thousand years. I don't think it's unreasonable to attend a tournament and deal with it tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it just makes no sense that there was a rush. It makes no sense that he needed desperately for this thing to go off without a hitch tomorrow. Why? He's got no good motivation. Oh. Uh, yeah, um, team, like, Spike Myth should never have been in that sort of disarray because it's got a gym, and only because it's got a gym. That's all it needed. And trainers come, therefore people come to watch the trainers. You are the second to last gym. Are you honestly telling me that people don't come to see the close, like, the last gym is, um, uh, what's his name, Rayhan? Are you telling me that at that point people aren't like gearing up? This is basically the semi-finals of the gym challenge. Are you telling me they don't want to go and see it? Why is Spike Myth like it is? It is a bad, like, it just wouldn't happen, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Like, you wouldn't see that in, in town. And like, again, I, I'm going to shut up because I've talked about it so much. I have problems with the story from, um, not Marnie's, Sonya's story motor stoke uh there's no way no way in hell i understand them forgetting the pokemon there is no way they didn't know that there were two youths two kings hell the post story is the royals coming out and going we are the rightful royals they know the story just kills me 
Like, and they even know that Zamazent, Zamazent, like, I mean, I assume they learned about Zamazenta and Zacian from Sonya's research, but, like, they know the story. They know. So how did the rest of Galar not know that there were two kings? Like, that part doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I'm going to stop because I, I really do. I get so fired up about how dumb the story is, but I love the characters. That is where they won. Sword and Shield won. Uh, because truly character growth and subtle storytelling is massive. I, so watching through, um, Hop is the best example. Like Hop is a great example where he, he's constantly on the trail of his brother, has to learn to be himself, tries other things, eventually learns that I need to be myself. I need to be best me for my Pokemon that I can be and and that makes it really cool you know um, on the topic of dislikes for Sword and Shield for me the region layouts have become increasingly more bland like where where the player actually navigates yeah I will say that is true um, I think some of I think it started in X and Y no it started in black and white didn't it um, yeah, they don't actually do much. You are absolutely correct, but they don't do much in the way. Because X, uh, so black and white was the circle. X and Y had the central hub of Paris, basically. And that, to be fair, was based on Paris, and that's how Paris is laid out. So I do get why they went that way with that. But I think it then stuck. And then, you know, the islands of Hawaii, the, Hawaii, uh, the islands of uh, Alola, were islands, right? So it wasn't... I, I, I do get how they didn't quite get there. Uh, and their yeah, Sword and Shield, very, very linear. I And I think it's to the detriment of some areas in the game, actually. Um, black and white was still alright as a whole, but it started a few bad trends, like Shiny Locks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hate Shiny Locks. Again, probably a discussion for another day. <laughs> but, you know, we can talk about it. It doesn't really bother me. Um, but, yeah, like that, that roundabout thing... That, that whole round way of doing things it's and it's to the detriment like i said so sword and shield the one area that i think needs more love is glimwood tangle it just needed more love like it did not deserve to be seen for half a second and be so beautiful and then you walk away and never see it again that whole area of glimwood tangle and balon lee up where, you know, the fairy type gym, it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. I want to go there, you know? Uh, this is the way out, right? I think. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. But they just, you literally kind of go there and then leave like there's nothing to keep you in Balon Lee there's nothing to keep you in uh in those areas so I completely agree it's very linear and you you don't have any reason to go back and circular and all that sort of stuff very cleverly done but very uh very much could have been something more I guess that's the best way of putting it okay up one more level. Some explosion will happen. I'll just tap through all this. Um, I was talking about something. Oh yeah, character development in Sword and Shield. I will finish soon, I promise, because otherwise, I'll, like I said, I've obviously gone on. I won't talk about the story anymore. But like, Hop's whole character arc, Bead's character arc is insane. Uh, that like, I don't, uh, not love for fairies, but like, um, um, like that being like, you know, wanting a challenge, not being able to acknowledge an opponent, eventually being able to acknowledge an opponent and really learning to come into his own and not be a puppet or a slave, but be himself. And yet still, he still has that arrogance, like, but that well-deserved confidence is a better phrase. He starts arrogant and he becomes confident. Very different. Like it's, it's, it's subtle. Oleana and Garbador of all all the rest of her Pokemon are beautiful female Pokemon and then Garbodor and it's subtle 
it's really subtle that she's got this garbage thing that she treats herself as garbage and she says it it's very subtle storytelling but she says it herself oleana you are hopeless when you beat her and then she needs desperately your help and she can't forgive herself at the end of it there's a depth to that character you know i like garbador too i just mean that like from the perspective of storytelling like she literally has a pile of garbage as one of her pokemon when the rest are beautiful females Frostlass, Salazzle, uh, um, not Steny, the Evolution, um, Serena, and uh, Milotic. They're all beautiful. They're all female exclusive Pokemon. Uh, uh, not all, but I suppose Milotic isn't female exclusive, but they're all associated with that beautiful exterior. And here's Garbodor. And there's something about that. It's a real subtle storytelling thing. And we find out through the anime uh, that we actually see that she has um like trubbish was the first thing she encountered uh and that's why so like she has this connection with trubbish very very powerful moments um so when you think of feminine design thank you that's the better way of phrasing it uh, again like not to excuse saying the wrong thing but i do apologize if i have i'm very tired <laughs> so i'm trying very very hard to not just say the wrong thing here um let's go heal um, sorry, I'll go back to one of the comments you said. When you think of a good region, there's always some level of complexity to the progression. Yeah, and that's where, like... Like, I think... Because they did make it fairly linear in the first two games. And I say fairly. They didn't really hold your hand as much. So there was more exploring to do. Hiccups, sorry. So there was more exploring to do. Um, and like, I could talk up that for days. This is actually why in terms of exploration, like they guide you a fair bit in Diamond and Pearl, I've noticed. But I would say that Gen 3 and 4 are the epitome of that. Where the maps are honestly a little wacky. Like look at this giant area of Eterna Forest. Look at this whole thing. This, this route here that is just a block. It's not a straight line. Uh, so there's just these two areas and the, the map has a giant circle in the middle. This is the sixth gym hidden off to the side. Like, you've got to explore. You've got to find things. I, I like that. You've got to, you know, they give you a lot of guidance in, the, in these two games. Uh, I think that's when they started to really give guidance. But they also give a little bit of a... Um, uh, je ne sais quoi. um, they give a lot of guidance, but it's there's also the exploration aspect, you know. So, yeah, I agree with you there. Um, <laughs> okay, so I get some more stickers. I'm actually looking for, like, I know it's silly, but that's one of the things I quite like the tiny little customizations. I actually like the sparkles on the balls, pokeballs. Um, I don't know why exactly, but yeah, anyway. Uh, I think I've said all I need, uh, all I am, all I was going to about Sword and Shield, so we can leave that one. Uh, we can leave that one be. Um, wait. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, I was about to look at the map again. Hold on, because I wasn't looking at it when I needed to. We'll go to Oroberg, up, and through to Half Home. Uh, and I will find out where, which, uh, so I, I did find out before where the, it said, hang on, Team Galactic Warehouse in Bailstone, so we've got to go to Bailstone. Um, you like how Blaine's gym is below the starter town in Kanto, uh, or Ho how Hoenn had the fifth gym near the start. Yeah, I actually quite liked that, uh, to be honest, my favourite part of Hoenn is, um, that your dad is the is the gym leader in general. First of all, you have a dad. One very different aspect from for Hoenn. But second of all, I love that he's the gym leader. Not just any gym leader, he's in the middle. So he's not the best, he's not the worst. It's actually kind of perfect, his whole theming of normal type as well. Uh, and he, yeah, I quite like, look, look I, again, I could wax eloquent all day. But at the same time, like, I wish they did more with it because like they, they, they have yet to do uh in my opinion something like it again 
where they have a normal gym that isn't just raw power. Because Whitney was in Oras, that dad had to cancel a date for work. He did? He probably did, and I'd forgotten. Oh yeah, Gen 3, yeah. That dad had to cancel a date for work, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. I did forget that, wow, okay. Um, uh, at, the, at the leading to Delta episode, yeah. That sounds exactly right. Um, yeah, man. The stuff, they, they, they are getting deeper and deeper in story. Uh, it is definitely something that I appreciate. You can really find whatever you want. Not whatever you want, but like whatever is there in the story for them to find. It's a real gold mine of storytelling these days. So much more subtle. Like a lot of, so much, like the direct story can sometimes really annoy me, but the subtlety of some of the storytelling is kind of insane. Um, yeah, I love I, I love Norman's gym. Um, so the normal gym. What I was uh, what I was getting at is they 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 didn't do the same thing ever again where they focused on like uh, this is the accuracy room, this is the speed room, this is the and using X items like that's a cool focus for a gym. Never seen it before. Uh, yes, I'm about to walk through. Oh, we need fly because we're actually past the six hour mark, and I can start checking some of these honey trees. Eh. Okay, hang on. Let's do the squares. Yeah, that is the way to do it. At speed, that is the way to do it. I think you need control more than speed. Um, uh, stories are right to include, but to constantly get stopped to the point you feel you're traveling nowhere is an issue. Could not agree more. Oh my gosh. Okay, I did... Uh, so I think I've talked about uh, doing the Pokemon X... I might have anyway. I did a Pokemon X Nuzlocke. Uh, it got so angry. So angry at that game. Like, unreasonably angry at that game. Because there was, I think, episode three. And I was just trying to... I found the Professor uh, again. You know, we went to the Lumios, found the Professor got the Pokemon and it's like, okay, you need to go. So Serena wants to meet you here and you need to go to the same cafe to meet Lysander and you need to go uh, and talk to all those likes. And I'm like, okay, I'll do this and this and I'll do this one thing and then I'll stop, but I'll travel myself to the next section so that when it's time, I'm ready to... Oh, that's cute, actually. Uh, hang on. I'll travel to the start of the next section so I can trigger it the next time. Nope, triggers a person coming to tell you, come here. It did it to me four times in the space of about 10 minutes where it hijacked me for the story. And I'm like, fine, I'll do it straight after this. But I want to go to the beginning of Route 14 so the next episode I can walk straight in. No, now my friend has to come and grab me and pull me to that route and then lead me into another conversation. Oh my gosh, I hate it. I think there is no bigger sin than perp in, in video games. There's no bigger sin than leading your players and having them have no license for themselves. <laughs> Rant over, because <laughs> that one I hate. Uh, like black and white did have a like, um, black and white did have a problem where they handheld you with doubles. They gave you a partner who healed you all the time. They thankfully eased that up a lot, but man, that was annoying. Uh, you couldn't finish X and Y. I don't blame you. Um, I did, but and to be fair, Xerneas, I, I quite like the the story with Lysander. And if you want to know something really dark, the, it's the only Pokemon game where where the evil villain commits suicide. So um, that's a thing. Um, <laughs> it's quite dark, actually. He literally kills himself. I don't think he does it intentionally either, which makes it worse. Um, <laughs> Um, legitimately, it's like, he, he fires the weapon. He's meant to destroy the world, as far as I read it. And then the, um, the weapon comes and fires back on itself. He kills himself. Don't think it's intentional. But it happens. So, yeah, very, uh, like... So there's, there's some interesting story parts to it, but, yeah, it is... Oh, it's painful. It is painful to, to walk through that game a lot of the time. But yeah, I like the legendaries. I did like the concept of the story of like the 3,000 year old 
king who became immortal and, and you know, made his Pokemon immortal and that thing. But it wasn't really done very well. Like, it could have been done a lot better. Okay, so Fly is apparently here in Veilstone. In the Team Galactic storehouse. If I talk to you... Maybe a visitor... Uh, okay, Fly. We actually physically find Fly. This is actually what I was doing. Yeah, like, so... I, I, and I kind of like that. Like, I like that there are these... There wasn't a lot of nuance in that story either. But the fact that he... he you know... I also hate in games as well the choice when it's not done well the choice that is not a choice uh separate point to that i do love you know what i can go south can't i i'm just gonna go south from here i got what i needed which was the um pm for fly i wish i'd realized uh let's head out to the lake um but yeah, like it's it's so so because they they did that. I know that I remember that really clearly, where it's like you um the the evil team guy he um not Lysander but like one of his admins or something, the scientist something like that. He comes in and says, "Hey, I um uh like well Lysander wanted me to give you the choice, so pick which which button. One button shuts it down. One button sets it off." You select the right one, he sets off the weapon. You select the one wrong, wrong one, the weapon goes off. That's not a choice. That's a badly done choice. The whole point is, well, we're gonna set it off anyway. Well, well then, why'd you give me a choice? I would very much like to never do that. Uh, never do that again. Because why? But comparatively, Bioshock Infinite is one of the best games for literally having no agency whatsoever. Which you only find out at the end. And you have cho- <sighs> Oh my gosh. Having trouble with that one. Uh, okay, we're at the lake front. Um, I need a new Pokemon. I think I need to like... Catch... I need to catch something soon. Four is fine for now, but... Oh, hang on. Altaria. Um... Bloop, bloop. There it is. Uh, water. Um, yeah, Bioshock Infinite's fun. Because uh, you end up in a position where it's like, hey, there is no license to what you were doing. But you made choices all along the way. To find out they all meant nothing was just such a huge part of the story, though. All right. I'm uh, going to take a quick five minute bio break. I'll be back very, very soon. Like I said, I just need to mostly take out the bins, but I'll take a bio break while I'm at it. So get some more water and probably make a coffee. So I'll probably be five to 10 minutes. Um, so stick around, I will be back. Uh, if you want to leave, feel free to leave. I do appreciate you coming and, and, and staying, uh, everyone for coming and staying and watching. So I won't be very long, but I will, uh, I will be back soon. So catch you all in a minute. Uh, I'll leave the music on at least. <laughs> Thank you.